What's going on everybody? We are back continuing our playthrough of Final Fantasy IV on the Super Nintendo. Um, last time we left off we had started the adventure out. We got Cecil, uh, Kane joined him until they visited the Village of Mist. Um, and then once they ran into Rydia, she summoned Titan, uh, which split up the group, and then Cecil and Rydia ended up joining forces, and we just went to the north of Capo, approaching a cave, and we're gonna go from there. So, starting out really quick, let's see. She's at 256. Let's grab Rydia another quick level before we go in there. Shouldn't take too long. There we go. Probably about three or four fights. Um, just finished watching the... I believe it was the Osaka tournament. Uh, Osaka FF TCG tournament. Uh, finals. It was Earth Wind against Mono Ice. So, naturally, no offense to all the Mono Ice players, uh, I was totally rooting for the Dotaluma Cactar machine gun combo. Um, and he, yeah, the Earth Wind won it pretty hard. Uh, so, congrats to him. They all got some really nice uh, Sephiroth playmats and trophies. Alright, so, Rydia just got a level. I would like her HP to be up above 100, so let's do that real quick. And then we will make our way in. Which yeah, that is 631. Actually, now we're just gonna go in now. So there's gonna be a treasure chest to the northeast. Two actually. So let's grab those. <clears throat> By the way, if you never knew if you use the RL shoulder buttons, uh, you can change who represents the party. Looks like that was kind of neat. Big thing about this area, uh, pretty much all the monsters are weak to lightning. Especially the, I believe there's fish and crocodiles uh, if you fight in the water areas. chest down here and then we have a gentleman sage waiting for us up north. Let's grab him. When I first played this game I actually got a little freaked out because I thought he was a boss. Oh that's right we need to go back to town. Big mistake on my part. And we need to engage a story part which will let us get past that. Right now he's saying we need to go back to Caper. So let's go take care of that. Get some extra XP and uh, Gil while we're doing that. It won't take very long. Go to this northeast house. Girl from Baron was kept from falling down. Yep. That would be our Rosa. Now, unfortunately, she says, Don't leave me, and the first thing we're going to do is leave her. Uh, we need Sand Ruby, which I believe is the Sand Pearl in the more up to date translations. Um, it's in the layer of the monster called Antlion. So now we have a new objective, and that is to get the Sand Ruby, Sand Pearl to help out Rosa. And with that, we are going to go straight back to the to the uh, to the cave. We're 
go, get ready another level. Uh, Venom is really useless in this, but still, it's always nice to get more magic. More frogs. Actually, are these guys weak to ice? Let me give that a shot. Yeah, there we go. I think it's the piranhas and the, the crocodiles that are weak to lightning. Alright, so because we went to Capo and saw Rosa, we now have the different dialogue going. So he is indeed uh, Tella, the Sage, uh, one of my favorite fire backups from the TCG. Known for nuking things pretty hard. Huge monster is blocking the way out of this place, so he is asking for our assistance. And we got him. So now we have three party members. Let's get him set up. Now he's a caster with weak defense, although he currently is the highest level, but he's going to go into a back row. Now let's check his equipment real quick. Currently has nothing really for that. He should be alright. He's got a nice array of spells and a ton of MP. So we're gonna get the rest of the treasure here. A little bit of money. There are those piranhas. I was referencing earlier. These are called Pythons. There we go. Now we're kind of burning through Rydia's MP, but there is a save spot coming up where we can use a tent. And actually I think the game provides the tent for us, so... Because it's part of a cutscene. Should be the last Emperor MP for now. Get some quick XP. Now, while Riddy is out of MP, uh, Tella still has about 90, so he we got plenty of nuke power left to get us to this next area. Pretty quick. Uh, let's give her a quick potion. There you go. And we're going to want to keep picking up the loot from this area. Uh, whether it's money, uh, Cecil gets a full set of gear. So we want to make sure to pick those up. Point, but I'd like to get that last chest, and along with a little more XP, uh, maybe bump Cecil up to the next level. Yeah. And ethers is, are extremely expensive, so you want to make sure you grab those from chests rather than having to dump a much, bunch of money at the, uh, the, the shops. So the party take, takes a rest here, they kind of catch up on Rydia's backstory, um, and they even explain, I think this is the only time they explain it, um, how in the Final Fantasy franchise, how they can like rest in tents and stuff like that without 
getting ambushed by monsters or um, Tell explains that the little uh, pillars around the safe point basically protect them. And then Tella talks about uh, his daughter Anna that uh, ran off because uh, she wouldn't, he wouldn't give her consent um, to marry a bard up in uh, Damasian, who we will discover is Prince Edward. that we are good to go let's go indeed we got all our uh, hp and mp back let's save it real quick and as per usual the rest of the dungeon is basically just uh, treasure hunting uh, and leveling up until we make it to this uh, Eight tentacle boss, which I believe is Octomomen. Got an ice rod, which we'll hook Ridia up with. If she runs out of MP, she can use it as an item to cast Blizzard. Encounter with zombies. Uh, zombies are weak to cures. Um, I wouldn't say weak, but it does damage to them and fire. Now, unfortunately, Cecil will only hit for one. Use that ice rod on Should do a tiny bit of damage, but enough to kill him. There we go. Now, in the all the other versions of this game, these hidden pathways are, well, they're completely hidden. And I guess Squaresoft felt like that would be too difficult for Americans playing their, what might be their first RPG. So even the pathways are lit up uh, just to assist. I thought that was kind of funny. and grab this other chest. These water hags, these mermen, are pretty easy to kill, but the tiny mages can be quite annoying. So we are gonna do our first summon, which is Chocobo, to quickly dispatch them. thought it would, and they do counter with lightning, so let's... Maybe it was they were weak to melee, but yeah, because they definitely are weak to magic, but the problem is they are in the back row, um, and they do have somewhat high evasion.
Now we did lose a huge chunk of MP due to those tiny sages using Psyche, which saps MP. Um, but there is another place we can rest with a temp before we make it to the boss. More ethers. Which would also help uh, fix the MP issue, but it's not that important. Trying to remember, um, sometimes memory gets a little foggy playing all these different RPGs. Um, yeah, got the Darkness Sword for Frog Cecil, which we will fix in a moment. That's a nice melee upgrade for him. on. So we made it to the next checkpoint. Let's just a pop a tent, get all our MP back. I always liked in Final Fantasy VI where depending on who your character was that was representing the party, uh, the tent would change its appearance. So let's save and go on. And go down this waterfall. I'm gonna pick up some more treasure down here. We are gonna run away from this. Um, I mean, it's decent XP and whatever, but it's just way too much MP usage and takes too long. percent of the game all of Cecil's Dark Knight armor has something to do with darkness it's like dark armor shadow armor you know I'm trying to remember in this version if it was just called black at some point but I think I missed a shield but not that big of an upgrade, so I'm not going to worry about it. And that looks like our boss. This boss, um, again, being a water creature, is fairly weak to lightning. So Cecil is just going to be providing a melee beatdown. We'll start off with a huge crit, and from there, Rydia and Tella will just be bombarding it with a uh, lit one. And as he gets weaker, you will see physically through the monster's image, he will lose tentacles. Now you could also use Chocobo, but I like to conserve our MP in case you need heals. Uh, the damage difference isn't that large.
and because uh, it is the American version, I'll give it that, but we've also uh, grinded ahead, um, we picked up some gear and all that, uh, the fight is pretty straightforward. And we made sure to put the casters in the background. Only two more to go. Cecil will probably get the killing hidden. There we go. 500 bucks and some good XP. And that concludes this dungeon. So it's time to peace out. Gonna save. And we're gonna head north. To which we are abruptly interrupted by a Red Wing strafing run. And with that music, we're gonna investigate. I'm trying to see. I think you could do this to get some extra loot. I know it works later on, but yeah, there we go. That we can get some extra treasure. This game really liked to use the uh, the hidden kind of walkways to hide treasure. Another leather cap. There we go. Ruby ring. Uh, so we're not going to use the bow yet, but we'll give the ruby ring to Iridium. And I believe it was a leather cap. Yep. Nope. There we go. Always good to find free gear. And we got all these goodies. Make sure to check the chest and the pots. Pick up some arrows. Um, now, those arrows right there in this version are called white. They're actually... Um, white is holy. Even the spell is... Uh, mistranslated the holy nuke spell and those arrows absolutely wreck uh, certain monsters in this game so it's a good idea to hold on to them so we are gonna go up figure out who's still uh, who's still breathing in this place extra tent When I first played this game, that music scared the crap out of me. Now we're going to watch a pretty iconic scene play out with a very famous quote in Final Fantasy. Boony Bard, referenced in many of the games. So, Tella is obviously very upset seeing the death of his daughter, um, but not only that, he's blaming Edward for it, which is why this encounter started. And this is the first time Golbez is mentioned. Uh, Edward here says Golbez attacked us with Baron's Red Wings, um, who is obviously a very important character. So the fire crystal is stolen.
thus begins the hunt for Golbez with Tell's Revenge. And with a slap, Tella leaves the party as he begins his quest for vengeance. Always liked Edward's theme with the harp. Fitting because he's a bard. Yeah, we do ask Edward for his help, and aside from him occasionally doing ranged damage to a few monsters or charming them with the upgraded harp, he really isn't that helpful in this version. Uh, he is a bit better in the Japanese version and the uh, PSP 3DS remakes. So our quest for the Sand Pearl continues. There is a hovercraft in Damasian we can use, which is handy. Say peace out to Anna, and we continue. There's the hovercraft. Which, to be honest, I'm just waiting for that to hit the MOG station in Final Fantasy XIV for like 50 bucks or something like that. Uh, we are going to... actually, yeah, let's get in here. I'm gonna go back to Capo, or Kaipo. Where are we at? Park here. Save the game. Edward is only level 5, and although he won't be contributing much, we're just going to grind out a few levels real quick for him. Now because he's ranged and he's weak, he's going in the back row. Uh, ranged characters do not suffer damage bonuses. Or, uh, they can do full damage from the back row. So occasionally when he attacks, uh, at least with this harp, uh, the monsters will be put to sleep. Which sounds handy, but I mean, things die so quick that putting it to sleep really isn't uh, that key. Actually, let's give him a quick heal. Couple more levels. <clears throat> Pretty just our toad. Um, a lot of the status ailment, uh, or at least the the status ailment spells in this game, like toad, piggy, um, mini. Uh, you can use them to counter spell, basically, or dispel. Um, if one of your characters has it, so if a monster, you know, if a monster uh, turns your character into a toad, and you cast toad on that character, uh, it'll fix them up. All right, let's give it. Let's get Edward one more level.
Now it's especially rare in this version, um, and I hate to say kind of useless, but um, imps, you when you kill them, they have a very small chance of dropping their summon spell for ready as an item. Uh, a few other monsters have it as well, but... And again, uh, most of them are fairly useless compared to her more powerful summons. So there's our level for Edward. We are gonna go pop in the inn real quick. We got about 7,600 G or uh, gil. No, I'm saying GP. 7,600 gil, which is pretty good. Some of the gear later on, um, if you want to get decked out fairly quickly, uh, it's rather expensive. Let's hop in the hovercraft. And to the northeast, we have our destination, which was previously unaccessible, but because now you have, you have the hovercraft, you get there. Um, we could go to the mountains. Actually, we can now, it's blocked off by ice not quite there, and we do need to take care of Rosa, so let's park, save, and let's go take care of business. As always, we're going to pick up most of the treasure, mostly just the, uh, you know, potions, ethers, tents, that sort of, and money, um, but there is a charm heart for Edward, which is Pretty handy. The tents are always good because they're pretty expensive. There's our first imp captain. Which, needless to say, is not that much scarier than an imp, but easy XP. Creams. These guys are weak to magic. Let me see if uh, I remember which one. Again, these monsters with their high defense are typically not worth the time it takes. Yeah, that's right. Um, later on, some of them give really good XP or they can drop items, but right now, compared to like the rest of the stuff, it takes you know mere seconds to kill. Um, just isn't worth the MP to deal with. And in these, uh, in the earlier parts of the game, potions are pretty handy, um, but it's a good idea to actually use them and not hang on to them because later on, um, with how much your max HP climbs, um, it's just not worth. Like you, you need to use like 30 potions to heal someone, so it just isn't worth it. Grats, Edward. Gonna pick up our harp here. Very subtle with the name of the weapons. Charm. chest up here. Do that one step for the next encounter. That tends to happen. Now in this, as you may have just seen, although it was fast forwarding, when you charm a monster, if a monster ever does a physical attack to another monster, um, it does the same animation as when a character uses melee, like a bare-fisted melee against the 
with the monster. We are just getting random encounters off the yin yang. Alright, so we are at the antlion's nest. Let's uh oh, let's just pop a couple of potions, get their health capped. In my old apartment, we actually had antlions right outside our front door, and it had to be like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Uh, had a bit of sand in the in the uh, in the area near the door that had plants nearby, and um, if you poked your finger in that area, you would see the sand start to fall, um, slowly spin, and then you would see the tiny little uh, ant pincers come out. Edward claims uh, the alien's tame. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> Not too tame. And boss fight. Now the gimmick with this guy is that he is... Uh, anytime you hit him with melee, he will counterattack with a uh, projectile. The way you get around that is you use Chocobo with Rydia and he will not counterattack. Not to mention, Chocobo hits pretty hard uh, on this boss. And the other characters you just defend, or apparently parry in this version. And if things do get out of hand, which doesn't look like they are because of my level, um, you can always just use Edward to pop a potion or Now, as an example of how he reacts when you melee swing with Cecil, I think it says counter. Yep. And if you're lower level, that hits like a bus, so you don't really want to do that. And for the damage that Cecil did, it just isn't worth it. Like one or two more chocobos and we're in business. Bucks, half a grand XP, level ups, and we get our sand ruby. Oh, yeah, let's go cure resin. our way out of here. Now that chest we just passed up has a potion in it and that's quite alright. I think we're running at about 25 potions right now so missing one won't do too much. Let's see if anyone's... I know they two just leveled, so let's wrap up, uh... Let's get one more level for Edward before we move on. This is our first back attack. Now, with a back attack, everything gets kind of mixed up because your casters are now vulnerable, your melee is doing reduced damage because they're in the back row. Uh, so to fix that, you can do change. Let's head back to Rosa. Love this world map music. It's pretty classic. Let's park it. Let's see.
deliver the medicine. So far, there's been a lot of little subtle hints that the king is not quite himself, um, which would also allude to why the Red Wings are going on a rampage, just blowing castles up and stealing crystals. Cecil introduces the rest of the party, and they decide that Fabul is probably the next target for Golvez. Rose explains that the pathway at Mount Hobbs is blocked by ice, um, which Rosa assumes Rydia can just get through that with her black magic. But because of what happened in her hometown, uh, it's a bit of an issue. So despite losing Tello, we are now about to gain Rosa, who is not only a white mage, but she's also an archer. So Rosa joins, we get a free rest at the house. But before we press on, there's a little interlude that happens that evening. It would appear that Edward is having trouble going to sleep. Should probably use lullaby on himself. And he comes out to start playing. have a quick story battle which you can't really lose, you just fight and you get through it pretty easily. I'm pretty sure you can't kill him uh, before you let this little scene play out and then it just kind of works itself out. Yeah, I think it's like the next hit always killed me. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, there, yeah, he goes arg and bites it. So, and he also gets a giant amount of XP for something as trivial as that. And with that, he gives his. They give their final farewell to each other. Edward, who is currently played in pretty much every Mono Ice deck. He's a fantastic backup um, that discards a card when he is played, and he also has an S effect that can cancel summons, which is rather annoying. So if you're ever playing against Mono Ice and you see that their backup Edward is undulled, or it's active rather, uh, be very careful when you go ahead to cast a summon. Especially something huge like Phoenix or uh, Seven Cost Odin or something like that, uh, because chances are they are waiting for it and they will cancel it. Alright, say bye to Grandpa Joe and let's get out of here. Um, now, unfortunately, we're gonna have to bump Edward out of his slot. Um, to put Rose in, uh, with her being a healer and a powerful archer, she is worth a lot more than Edward is, and if he bites it, uh, it's no big deal. Now, 
Let's check out her gear. Yeah, she already comes out with comes equipped. Um, and then we had the crossbow that we picked up earlier, so we will replace the short bow. So we are going to head out uh, of both this video and this town. We are our next destination is going to Fabul uh, to prevent Golbez from stealing the crystal, which we will start in the next video. So thanks for watching, and uh, make sure you check out part three as soon as I post it. Thanks.